Hello and welcome to another episode of Coffee Fusion. This week we've got more Coffee Fusion questions, so let's get stuck in. The first question comes from Jack K on YouTube and he was wondering uh, whether the amount of air you add to your milk has an effect on the latte art you can do. There are a couple of comments from other people and there are some differing answers so I thought uh, we'd better have a look at this uh, systematically. Um, so what I decided to do is to um, weigh out the amount of milk I started with so we're always starting with the same amount of milk and then go ahead and um, texture the milk uh, with the normal amount of air that I would use and then with more to see the results. So this first pour you're going to look at is me pouring a five leaf tulip uh, with milk uh, textured the way I'd normally make my coffee. Um, so a little bit of air added in, uh, not too much. Pretty similar to what you get for a flat white. As you can see with this pour, um, there's nice contrast, um, really defined pattern, uh, looking good. So with this next pour, although I started with the same amount of milk, I purposefully added a lot more air into it, uh, similar to what you'd get for a uh, old style uh, cappuccino. Now you can see on the jug here, I marked the level of where the uh, aerated milk, the textured milk came up to on the previous one. And you can see now with this jug, there's quite a lot more uh, air added. And when I go to pour this one, uh, anyone who's poured a cappuccino and tried to make some latte art out of it knows, um, straight away there's a lot more white on the surface. So it takes me quite a while to uh, kind of get rid of that um, so I can start my pour. And the moment I move that jug closer, the, um, the aerated milk kind of just falls onto the crema. So it makes it a lot harder to pour a, um, a decent sort of high contrast pattern. Now that's not to say that if you're going to make a cappuccino, you can't pour latte art. You just have to think um, a little bit about the pattern you're going to pour. Um, obviously the customer gets what they ordered, so you don't want to just go, I'm going to make thin milk because my latte art is better. Uh, you want to um, you know, give the customer what they want, and then second to that, think about the design that might work uh, for the milk you have. Great question, Jack. The next question we have is uh, from Caffeine Zombie on YouTube. What a great username to begin with. And they were wondering about takeaway cup versus a dining cup and the differences in the pours. So what I've done here is poured a pattern with both of them. Uh, let's first of all look at the uh, takeaway cup. I used a clear cup here so you could see the difference. Now both this clear cup and the dining cup have almost exactly the same volume. When I pour with this clear cup, there's a lot more height, so it means I have to spend a lot more time um, adding milk before I can start my pour. And you see it's about three quarters of the way filled before I start my pattern. The reason I have to do this is because, um, because of that extra height in the cup, it takes me a long time before I can get the uh, jug close to the crema. This means when you're pouring into a takeaway cup, the design you can pour is a lot less intricate. Now when I pour with that dining cup, you can see uh, that as soon as I set the crema, I can move my jug so it's right to the surface. So that means I can start pouring my pattern pretty much straight away. And as a result of that, although I poured tulips in both cups, uh, I could fit many more steps in the tulip on my uh, dining cup. Thanks again to both of you for your questions. And remember, if you have a coffee related question, post it in the comments below or on Facebook or on Instagram and uh, I'll try and get to the best ones. Now let's catch back up with Mimic Monday. Uh, the first pour I want to look at was a pour that heaps of you had to go out, which was really wicked, um, is that Wave Tulip. So in case you don't know how to pour this one, uh, set your crema as normal and then move your jug to one side of the cup and start to wiggle in your rosetta. Now because that milk stream isn't in the center of the cup, instead of it wrapping around evenly, you'll see the milk move to one side and by continuing to wiggle, you will move that wave uh, rosetta around the cup. Now as your cup starts to fill, wiggle that uh, wave around a little bit more and then push your first bulb into the center. After that, it's just a matter of pouring the rest of your tulip, lifting up and pulling through. Now, as I was saying, there's a lot of people who gave this pour a shot, which was wicked, uh, but these were the ones who did it best. Uh, the pattern we had next week was a lot more difficult, and uh, as you can see, less people attempted it, but it was really good. I think it is worthwhile giving you guys challenges that are hard um, to see who can um, pour the best. 
So this pattern had a three bulb chula base and then two rosettas coming up either side and then a three bulb tulip in the middle of those rosettas. So set that crema and then start pouring those bulbs for the base. Remember to pour them down fairly low because you've got quite a lot to fit in with this pattern. Start with the rosetta furthest away to you, uh, then pour the other rosetta which is closer to you and then after that you push in the three bulbs for the tulip in the middle and you'll see that that milk there causes those rosettas to kind of wrap around it. Really wicked to see your versions of the pour guys, uh, these are the ones who did it best. Last but not least, let's check in on Free Pour Friday. Um, as we're getting back into the swing of things, we have lots of people entering again, which is really wicked to see. There's so many talented people in the uh, Coffee Fusion community. So um, first of all, make sure you play along for Free Pour Friday. But if you check out the hashtag on Instagram, you'll see some wicked pours and some great people to follow. Thanks so much for watching guys. Remember to get those coffee related questions in if you want them answered and I'll see you next week. Thanks very much guys for staying to the end and watching this whole video. Um, if you haven't already, if you click like, it really helps uh, for the videos to build further and to build a bigger Coffee Fusion community. Um, if you also haven't already, click subscribe. Uh, there's a Facebook page to follow, so that's facebook.com forward slash Coffee Fusion and Instagram is at the Coffee Fusion. Thanks very much guys, I'll see you next week.